Hi everyone, Liz here. Thanks for stopping by. So today I have two parcels have come through the letterbox in two separate packages and I thought you might like to have a look at them with me. So we'll get into them and have a look and see what we've bought. Bought? We'll see what we've got. <laughs> That's a brilliant start to the video, isn't it? Let's have a look at the slightly bigger one first and see what this one is. Okay. Um, I've got a funny feeling that these are going to be ones that I've been using my uh, coupons on, sorry, my coins on from AliExpress. They do look like AliExpress type packages. Yep, that one's uh, empty. So, oh, we have uh, oh, a very muted colour palette there. And yeah, so all nice in the little grip seal bags as well. And it is a square. Okay, oh, we've got a... Pretty good toolkit there as well with metal trees at tweezers. Do you know my mouth's not working today, is it? And uh, there's no cover on those, so I'll be careful when I open it. I don't want stabbing. And then, oh yes, I know what this one is. So let's get it out. It is a double sided tape canvas, so we need to treat it gently. Once it's been unrolled, don't roll it back up again because. It can cause oops, you to get to, it can cause um, you to get like a an air pocket underneath the uh, double sided tape is like a, a sticky tape put on top of the canvas and you can find that you can get an air bubble or get rivers or whatever if the tape stretches a little bit. Um, and it can cause you all sorts of problems. Getting things like that just means that your canvas um, isn't going to lay flat, so your drills won't lay flat, and you don't want that happening. Oh, that's coming unstuck there. What am I doing? I'm opening the wrong side. Oh, what am I like? I'm undoing the sellotape from the wrong side. <laughs> Shall I just stop this video and start again? Nah, we've started now. Let's keep going. <laughs> is how not to make a YouTube video 836 um, so can I get this sellotape off now seeing as I've just cut it oh dear me yeah it's got the sellotape off I don't like the sellotape uh, or the sticky tape I know some countries have a different name for sellotape don't they but we call sticky tape sellotape here in the UK um, but yeah uh, I do prefer that putting the sticky tape on rather than the rubber bands because they can cause problems. So this is very, very tightly wound on a very tiny roller. Not a very wide one, that one. So let's just see if we can get a bit flattened out. Oh, hey. Oh, this is different. Okay, so we've got one of those canvases that we do tend to mainly get from... Uh, the Chinese sellers and it has actually a little key code at both sides and a thumbnail picture at both sides as well. We haven't got the company name on though. Let me just uh, try and keep this flattened a little bit. Let me just have a look and see who this one was from. All right, so this is actually a Huacan painting which is difficult. Um, it's very different for it to not have Huacan on the top. They usually do uh, brand all their canvases, so that's unusual. Um, this one I used my AliExpress coins, which if you go onto AliExpress, they have like, a little game or something. I think mine's, I think I, I plant something every day and every day I have to then harvest it. And sometimes there's a little worm that you get extra points for or something. Um, not points, coins. So I just collect those up. Um, the, you tend to use about 500 coins to get a good discount off these. So this one, um, it is a 30 by 40 and it is 35 colours and it's cost me £3.77 with taxes and everything. So that's a pretty good price for um, a canvas this size. So it's unusual that who I can haven't got their name on it but it is definitely a hurricane. Um, normally we have down here 
saying uh, 30 by 40 and 35 colours, but that's not there either. We have got the 30 by 40 up there and on there, so that's set unusual. So I won't be cutting my flappy bit off, although I might still do, because I only really need one little key code at one side, don't I? Um, it's only a smallish one. And this is a little robin. And the thing that drew me to him um, is he's not in snow and it's not particularly a winter picture. He's sat on like um, a rain barrel. Uh, this is like a drain pipe coming down and this is like a, a water barrel, a, ra a rain barrel at the bottom. So he's not just for sort of Christmas cards and things. You could have this one up all year round. And I do like my birds. I do like my robins. Um, but this one has such a cross expression on his face that I just couldn't resist him. He just looks so funny. Let's see if I can get him around this way a little bit. Let this canvas just flatten. This canvas is in really good condition. You can't see any rivers or bubbles or puckers or anything on this. Let's see if I can just lift that up so you can see the little thumbnail. Yeah, you can more or less make that out if i come slowly it might yeah that's good but yeah it just looks a really cross somebody's obviously said something to him to annoy him so i just thought yeah i'll have an annoyed robin on my wall that's fine <laughs> <laughs> and then we do have two robins in our garden um and they do fight they bump chests they get really really territorial and cross with one another uh, but they are, tend to be very friendly little animals and I know sometimes um, some people can actually feed them from their hand because they do get very used to you and get used to gardening. I know when Hubby used to go out into the garden, I'm just going to pull the uh, paper from this side as well just to help it flatten. As you can see I've not quite got it lined up but I'll do that off camera. Otherwise, I could be here a while. Yeah, when Hubby used to go out and do his gardening, when he could go out and garden, um, we did have a really friendly robin, and he'd quite often have a robin as he was digging and putting plants and things in. The robin would be following him along to see if there was any grubs or worms or whatever left behind that he could eat um, from where Hubby had been digging. So, you know, he, he wasn't frightened of us. He wasn't bothered by us at all. They are very lovely, friendly little animals, and they are very, very pretty as well. As I say, yeah, when they fight, they fly at each other and bump chests, get really yeah, cross with one another. So, oh, yeah, that's a, a nice canvas. There is a little bit of um, sort of ridge in there where it's been wrapped around the roller, but the actual canvas itself is lovely and soft as well, a real sort of material -y feel to the canvas. Really quite pleased with this. And uh, with it being square, we should get plenty of detail. So let's have a look at the toolkit to see what toolkit we got. So this one, again, is uh, well and truly up from a standard toolkit. We've got uh, one of your white sparkly pens with a little blue pen grip. And that's a four-placer because it says so on it. <laughs> and it's one of the new thinner ones. And so I presume that this is going to be a 10. There's my little just get my little card. I think I'll have to uh, upgrade this. It's getting a bit tatty now. Yep, yeah, that's a 10 placer. So that one has come with a 10 and a 4. Which uh, if you do your multi-placing is really good. Uh, there is Oh yeah, there is. I was going to say there's no ends for this, but yeah, there is. These are your really good quality um, metal tweezers. Very, very sharp though, so be careful with the ends. Always try and keep your cover on for safety. And we have um, two rectangles of wax, which is like four of the little standard squares. So yeah, one up from, well, quite a few up actually from a, a basic toolkit. That's a, a nice toolkit. I don't like getting toolkits. I keep meaning to do a list of which companies do which toolkits, albeit some companies do seem to use a couple of different manufacturers sometimes, so you're never quite sure what you're going to get. All right, so let's have a quick look at these drills. So they are all in bags. Oops. 
so I will go through every colour. But uh, yeah, with it being a, a robin, we're quite a, in a garden scene, we're quite a muted palette. So I've got some browns there, holly fawns, and a dark brown fawn. That looks like it's a navy blue there. And we've got some greys, some more blues, lots of green sage greens. Oh, they're pretty blues, they're nice like those. And some browns. Again, a lot more different shades. All the different shades. I do love it when you've got all the different shades though. And there's just a subtle difference between one to another. Because it just gives that little bit of depth to your picture. Just that uh, little bit of subtlety. I've got a horrible feeling this robin's going to be orange. We'll have a look at that. That's another couple of colours there rather than red. Yeah. So it looks like we have a bright orange to go on the robin of greys there so i will quite possibly be changing that out i've just um done a, a robin wreath and they've put the robin um with sort of more orange color on his tummy rather than uh, putting the red and i'm debating whether to switch that out at the moment as well so this is number 13 and this key code is upside down <laughs> And that's V, so let's just see if we can carefully have a look at this robin and just see where V is. Yeah. Yeah, so the robin is going to be really, really orange. Um, I may or may not, no, I'm not going to. I'm going to swap that out to be um, a more subtly red, ready orange, I think, rather than that because that is just so bright as an orange and robins have sort of an orangey red but more red um so yeah i think i'll be swapping that color out although i suppose on the thumbnail he is quite orangey looking there isn't he sometimes you think yeah once it's mixed in with the other colors it won't look quite so bright but looking at this that is quite a large concentration of uh, the symbol v there and that really is going to be the predominant colour in this one. So I think I'm going to be swapping that one out. But other than that, I am quite happy. And I think for sort of under £4 for a painting, it's a pretty good thing. So that's painting number one. Let me just get this one put away. And then we'll have a look at the next one. So we'll just get this one put out the way. And we'll get the next one to have a look and see what that one is. Right, so this one has come in a smaller package. It's been well and truly wrapped in. Oh, and this one is poured glue. Okay, oh, oh, okay. Scotty Dog Crafts strikes again. Let me just get my paperware. Right, okay, so this one is from the Doe Eye Star Store on AliExpress. Um, I didn't use any coins on this one because this is one of my favourites. And I think you can see from the little thumbnail that we have a little sat up begging Scotty Dog there. And Millie does do that. Millie, our little Scotty Dog, does actually sit up and sit down on a bottom. And she will sit like that if she wants attention or if she's not quite high enough to look out the window, she will sit like that. So this one is, again, and oh, this is a round. I thought I'd ordered it in square, but no, it's round. And again, very uh, muted colour palette. But uh, yeah, it's because it's a little Scotty dog. Yay! If you don't want to hear me falling about Scotty dogs for the next five minutes, fast forward. <laughs> Okay, so we've got a boat uh, wax and a pen and it looks like we've got a little old fat three placer just uh, in the back there as well. So, so this is from a different store, but it looks like a lovely canvas, a poured glue. Wow, it only has 18 colours and the symbols are all numbers which go from one to nine, which is brilliant. One is one, eight is eight, etc. And then we have capital letters. Ooh, but look at E and F. That's not good. 
that's going to take some looking. I'm going to have to make sure that uh, when I get to my E's and F's that I'm not getting confused because those colours are practically the same. And uh, with my eyesight, those symbols are likely to look exactly the same as well. So I will have to be careful. Now then, this one is a 30 by 45. So I'll give it a measure in a minute. Let's just flatten it down a bit. This is just poured glue. So you can actually re-roll these um, once you've taken them out of your packaging. If you want to roll it up and keep your diamonds in the middle, you can do. I'll just double check it is actually a poured glue. Yep, yeah, you can't lift anything up from the corner there. That is definite poured glue. That's just a layer of glue added on top. There isn't like another layer of um, like tape added onto the top of it. So that's good. Um, I didn't say this one cost me £9.33 without using any coupons or without using um, any coins or anything. I've actually paid full price for a diamond painting, would you believe? But I still do believe it is a very, very good price. And for poured glue, um, I'm even more impressed because you do tend to pay a little bit more for a poured glue canvas. I think they're a bit more labour intensive by putting the glue on the top rather than just putting a tape over the top that's dry straight away. So look at that little face. Is that not just cute or what? And it's quite a long neck actually. And uh, Millie does have quite a long neck. She's quite a long Scotty. Um, our previous Scotty Maisie was quite what we called a squatty Scotty, where she was quite a short body and a short neck and smaller legs. Um, Millie tends to have, um, she's got a longer body and a very elegant long neck. She's very pretty, is Millie. But yeah, I just thought, oh, look, and the little tuft of their eyebrows. I love it when they're uh, laid and their eyebrows move. You can see them laid on the floor and they're pretending to be asleep, but then their eyebrows start moving. <laughs> but that looks like a lovely clear key, um, clear canvas. Symbols all look pretty good apart from that E and F. Oh dear. But that background is all confetti. There is no colour blocking at all. It looks like you get one or two colours the same and then it changes to the next colour. So this is going to be fun to do. Uh, it will definitely be a single placer one. Yay! <laughs> but look at that. Oh, it's so sweet. So let's have a look at these drills. Oh, we have got an inventory sheet as well. So that's good. We've got key code top and bottom with DMC numbers on as well. Okay, so it is all bagged up into uh, the little grip seal bags. I'm not going to take those out because I think you can see all the colours there. Wow, they're big numbers. Goodness me, I can see those from space. So yeah, that's number 16. So we've got all your sort of like muted greens and a bit of a blue there for the background. And then all your greys and browns. And let's see whether there's any 310. I don't think there is. Oh, there is just a bit of 310, I think. 317, yeah. So we have a few different colours. Oh, that's a good size as well. So let's have a look. What have we got the most of? We've got 4,500, which still isn't a huge amount of drills, um, of number 13, which is 3072. Three tens, oh, we've got 1,800 three tens, so there is quite a few there. But yeah, so that's your packing slip. Um, once I'm off camera, I will just check that I've got all of the colours and likewise with the other painting as well. Um, as you get your projects, just double check that you've got the right um, drills to go with your packets. Uh, you don't want to be looking at it and then putting it away for a year and then thinking, oh, no, I've got the wrong drills. <laughs> uh, maybe that's just me. <laughs> OK, so, yeah, I'm very impressed with that. Let's just have a quick measure, see whether we are true to size it does seem very big maybe it's because it's the 45 but i wonder if it is true to size let's have a look so yeah we are 45 centimeters which is 19 uh, sorry 17 and a half inches so yeah it's true to size that way let's have a look this way and it is ooh, 
just more or less on 30 centimetres, which is just about 11 and three quarter inches. So it is practically on size as well. I did think it looked big. It's uh, certainly a lovely canvas, but yeah, really pleased with that. Really pleased I got that one. So when I'm going to get around to starting this one, I don't know, because I've got so many Scotty pictures to do. But I can't resist them. I think collecting Scotty diamond paintings and actually doing them are two separate hobbies. <laughs> right, so we've looked at two paintings. One which is that gorgeous little Scotty dog just sat there looking. wonder what uh, he or she is after. And then a little cross robin sat on a, a water bucket there on a spout waiting for something to come through. Okay, well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed looking at these with me. If you have, a thumbs up is always much appreciated. And if you want to come back and see what I get up to next, if you press that subscribe button and the little bell next to it, you'll be notified when my next videos come out. So thanks ever so much for stopping by and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye for now.